You are listening to a message from Victory. We hope it inspires you to honor God and make disciples in your community. As we continue on this series and end rather this series, okay, I would like to throw some things to you today, okay? Um, sino sa inyo na mga hugot lines? Hmm? Meron ako mga konting hugot dito. Okay? Kung ano yung, sino sa inyo totoo may hugot kayo? Sino, sino dito sa inyo may hugot? Ano bang hugot sa English? Ha? Huh? Pick up? Is it pick up lines? No, it's not really pick up lines. Hugot is uh, something that you uh, pull. Okay? You pull over, you know, with force. Okay? Uh, something that you, uh, or we say this in, 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 uh, in uh, Filipino, we hugotize. Okay? We hugotize. as a Filipino English term for hugot. Anyway, um, hugot. Okay? Ready na ba kayo? Okay, I'm bigyan ko tayo. Pero please, you know, I mean, if you like this, you, you shout, okay? If you don't, you, you still shout, okay, in agreement, okay? Okay, you don't have any choice, okay, but to agree. Okay, uh, to our friends, okay, to our friends who, who cannot fully understand uh, uh, Tagalog, okay, please, just pretend that you understand. Okay, just pretend that you do, okay? So it goes like this, okay? Al- alam mo ba ang pinakamapait sa pag-ibig? ang yung ampalayain ka ng wala lang. Mapait. Ampalaya. Diba? Okay. Tagal nun na. Okay. Kaya ito ang pangalawa. Huwag kang kumain ng ampalaya kasi baka maging bitter ka. Okay. Ito. Ang pag-ibig ko sa'yo ay parang taho. Matrabaho man, pinagsisigawan ko pa rin. Taho! Taho! Okay. More? Okay, sige. sige. I, have, I have some more. I have some more. Okay. Uh, dilim ka ba? Kasi nung dumating ka, wala na akong makitang iba. <laughs> okay. More? Oh, okay, I have some more, okay? But be sure, you're going, you're going to shout louder, ha? The louder, the, the longer, the more, the louder, okay? Pabili ng kape! Ha? Pabili ng kape, kasi nais kong makapiling ka. <laughs> okay. Pabili ng kape! Huwag yung three in one, kasi stick to one lang ako. Yeah. Yun. Okay, when you talk about hard truth, hard truth is having a biblical understanding of real love and a secure marriage in a culture that counters the truth of God's design and plan on relationships and marriage. So that this morning, we will look into, you know, what marriage, you know, that, uh, that uh, we, will look at, we will look at marriage and uh, we go and check, okay, when, when and where it started. So when we talk about marriage, when we talk about love, we always go back to the to the default, okay? When you say to the default, okay, we go to the to the first mention, okay, to the original text or your context of it. Okay, marriages and its customs va- customs vary. Here in the Philippines, okay, we have marriages, you know, we have different customs and it varies. Like the varian, it's it's different from different nations, okay? We go to the U.S. It's different. When you go to uh, when you go to Japan, it's different. When you go to uh, Thailand, it's different. When you go to other places, okay, it's totally different. That's why when when we talk about marriage and, uh, marriages and its cons- customs, okay, we uh, it it varies. But okay, again, okay, the thing is we go back, okay, we go back to the original or we go go back to the original context where it all started, okay. With this, you know, I would like to I would like to present to you, okay. There's an ancient Jewish marriage customs, okay? In Jewish customs, ancient, ancient, okay? Ancient Jewish customs, there are three areas or three aspects of these customs. First, the contract, okay? Signing the contract, okay? It is creating the marriage bond. The bride would choose her husband and her father would sign a legal contract with him, which they call this ketubah, Okay? So it means, okay, in the ancient Jewish, okay, ancient, ancient Jewish customs, okay, the contract goes ahead, okay? It goes ahead, okay? Once this is signed, 
The couple is 100% married, but they do not engage in sex. Okay? They're married, okay, legally married, but there's no sex yet. Okay? So, meaning, um, they have this custom that, that arranged marriage, you know, as probably as, as young as one year old, you know, they're already arranged. So, what happens now, young children were often married or arranged marriage, but do not consummate until the age, okay? Meaning, they will wait for the age of, for, for example, for the, for the girl, okay? Wait for the girl to, to, to arrive, okay? To reach a certain age wherein she's already capable. And how is that? When she begins to menstruate. When menstruation comes in, okay, the marriage can, begin, can now begin or the contract now can be established further, okay? So, that's the first, a contract. Second is consummation, okay? Consummation is uh, the point at which something is complete or finalized. It is, it is where the action of making a marriage or relationship complete by having sexual intercourse. Now, now, now going back, okay, going back. If the child, for example, the young girl is around, you know, a certain year, uh, a certain age, for example, and not yet has arrived, okay, from from the menstruation. Now the now the guy would wait for probably around seven years or more, okay, to for that to happen. Now when that happens, okay, consummation now starts. Now, now this is this is another, this is how it goes, okay. The consummation or the or the the act of marriage or the, or the relationship of this uh, of this couple uh, on sex, okay, happens, okay, happens in her home. Sa bahay ng tatay niya, in, in her home, of which the father, okay, the father would set a room, you call it a consummation room, wherein the couple will then consummate or, or have, their, no, have, have a sexual intercourse. Now, uh, now, during that time, okay, during that time, okay, they were given a cloth, a white cloth wherein they call a virginity cloth. Okay, the virginity cloth now, okay, would symbolize, okay, would symbolize what happened in the consummation room. Okay, you would probably ask, why is it white? Okay, white because, okay, white because, okay, because this will be the time where in, um, it will be a proof that the girl is virgin. Okay, so what happens now, okay, this, this cloth will be used, okay, used rather, will be used after the lovemaking, and then guess what? Ask me what? The virginity cloth will now be displayed. Okay, telling, okay, telling and announcing, okay, to, uh, to the people and to the family that indeed the girl is virgin and the white cloth has now stained with blood. Okay, now when that happens, okay, when that happens, the couple now gets out of the room together with the virginity cloth, okay, symbolizing, you know, now, the, the, their union has started, and guess what happens? Celebration happens. That's where, okay, that's where they, they dance, you know, they sing, you know, and they celebrate. There's a feasting. Now they feast, okay, they feast together, okay, they feast together, celebrating their union, celebrating at the same time, telling, you know, our daughter is a virgin, Okay? And our son okay, is, has successfully, you know, uh, successfully done his part as a husband. Now the whole family, the whole town together celebrates at least for five solid days. For five days they will celebrate announcing to the, to the community, announcing to the whole people okay, that there is a marriage, there's a marriage that, that happened. Okay? That is how they do it in, in ancient times. Contract consummation and celebration okay so now the groom hands the blooded uh, no, proof of his of virginity cloth to the witness chosen to the bride's parents and then to give to the bride as a proof okay as for safekeeping now this will be you know, this is this is where this is where they say you know, parang this is where to, to our present day contract this is the marriage contract okay imagine Okay, imagine, if you have a marriage contract, okay, go to NSO, okay, pr you know, kung ano kaya, you will check, you know, tela ibibigay sa'yo. Okay, pero ngayon papel na, and telling that you are married. Okay, so, 
I would like to start out with Minion McLaughlin, which says, sabi, he said this thing, sabi, you know, na, a successful marriage requires falling in love many times, always with the same person. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, in verse 7 and 8, it reads, Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Verse 8, all together, let's read the last three words. One, two, three. Love never ends. Let's all pray. Father, we thank you, God, for this day. We honor you. We give you praise. Lord, speak to us. Lord, cause us and give us, Lord, a, a fresh understanding all about marriage in your context and in the context of your word. Father, I pray, God, you bless this day for us. Be with us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See, lo real love doesn't care about body type. It doesn't care about model looks or wallet size. It is more concerned about what's inside. Okay, what's inside that person? What is that person made of? When we talk about marriage, okay, we, there, we have a lot of concepts about marriage. There are, there, are, there, are, there are concepts in this world that has brought up when we call uh, there's what we call trial marriage, when they uh, they don't really end up being married, but they you know they try you know living together and um, and uh, for a couple of years probably and live together and later on they would say you know oh if we're not really comfort we're comfortable with each other and we're not compatible with each other we can easily break up at least wala masyadong wala masyadong sakit wala masyadong ano kasi you know there's no contract but you know I you know. Uh, Marriage or love is not just about paper. It's basically, you know, uh, ma a person's uh, emotions, okay? So there are, uh, there are other concepts of marriage, like uh, uh, aside from uh, trial marriage, there are, there's, a marriage, there's a marriage that literally has a contract. For example, okay, okay, we'll get married, we'll sign a contract for five years, okay, for 10 years, or 10, uh, 15, or 20. It depends or if we're still comfortable with each other. Now, after 10 or 15 years, 20 years, we're good. Okay, we'll extend the contract. If not, then we'll just, you're going to say, okay, we'll just, no, we'll just uh, end the contract, okay? Some people think marriage is that way, okay? But again, okay, I'm telling you, okay, marriage is more than that. It's more than what we really understand. That's why this, this morning, we're going, to, we're going to try to understand what the scripture says about marriage and how are we going to apply this in our own personal lives. If you're married today, God bless you, and the Lord may bless your marriages. If you're not yet married today, you know, wait for the right time. You know, God will give you the right time, okay? Uh, the right person, the, the right time. And if you're, if you're here today, you know, you're, you're a couple and you're not yet married, my goal is that you'll be able to see marriage and be excited to get married, okay, within the year or then within six months. You see, marriage doesn't have to be expensive. It only has to be true. It only has to be sincere. Amen? Can you, can you bang sikuhin yung katabi niya and say, hey, you heard that? Okay. Okay. Firstly, what is marriage? What is marriage? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, in verse 7, it reads, Love bears all things. Okay? Note the word there. Love bears all things. B-E-A-R-S. Not B-A-R-E-S. Okay? Love doesn't bear, okay, like take off your clothes, you know, not bearing all, but, but love bears all things. God made marriage for a couple to share their life together. It is two people purposely decided. Everybody say decided. They're purposely decided to be one. Okay? That's why the Bible said the two shall become one. Marriage is first and foremost purpose. We have to define, we have to understand the purpose of marriage. Okay? okay? If God, okay, if God made marriage, there must be a purpose to it. This is not just something, an accident wherein, you know, God created Adam and Eve and so on and so forth. And so, oh, by the way, by the way, Adam, Eve, I have an idea. Okay? After all these things, you know, so on so, and so, so forth, you know, uh, this is it. You know, I believe that before God created Adam, God already had an intention. He already has a purpose for marriage. Okay? It wasn't a laid purpose. It was a purpose intended even before he created man and woman. 
I believe this is the very purpose why he, he created Adam and Eve because he has a purpose for unity and for oneness. Amen. It is designed to enable man and woman to accomplish more together than they could individually. Okay? You know, um, and we always say this, we have this old saying, two heads are better than one. Agree, disagree. Right? Two heads are better than one. You know, you're, more, you're wiser, you're better, you can make uh, good decisions, you know, if you have someone with you. You know, God intended that, designed that, amen. So that, so that if one person can already do good, two can do better and best, amen. That's why, you know, that's why when, when, um, when, uh, when, when, Married people introduce their, their spouse, they would say, my better half. Meaning, you know, if I introduce my wife, okay, my introduction to introduce my wife, I will introduce her my better half because I'm only good. The only reason why I can be best is because through her, she brings out the best in me. Okay, kaya nga parang taho eh. You know, pinagkatrabawahan mo, pero pinagsisigawan mo pa rin. Taho! Okay? You know, marriage is God's idea that it's that it intends to establish an institution for families. The reason why God placed marriages, okay, instituted marriage, is that He will have a place for families. Amen. That He would have a place for it. Amen. It is not something. It is not a a random thinking about. Okay, okay. What's the next thing? No. God intended it really. For families, the Bible says, you know, the Bible says very clearly in, in the book of Psalms, because He brings the lonely in families. Okay? Who among you here, you, you would say, you can say that uh, your Valentine is lonely because you don't have a partner or you don't have someone with you. Okay? Your Valentine is, uh, is cold. Malamig ang, ang Valentine, hindi lang Pasko. Kasi nag-iisa ka, kawawa ka naman. You know? Kaya hindi na ako nagsa-celebrate ng Valentine's. What is Valentine's for? I don't have a partner. Okay? See, Valentine's is not about having a partner. Valentine's is basically knowing. Okay? Knowing that you are not alone. You may be alone, yes, but you're not, you don't have to be lonely. Are you here with me? You can always find, okay? You can always find this thing. Hindi naman kailangan nasa relasyon ka para, para masaya ka. You, you, can be, you can be happy, okay, with inspiration in itself. Hello. You see, when, that's why when we talk about these things, when we talk about love and marriages, you know, we all first have to understand and, and understand the purpose. Okay, marriage is not about one person. It is about two people decided to live as one fulfilling God's purpose. I would like to quote John Maxwell. He said, A difficult time can be readily endured if we retain the conviction that our existence holds a purpose, a cause to pursue, a person to love, a goal to achieve. You know, when, when, when you're married, when you're married, you know, you have, you have a cause. You have a cause to pursue. When I married my wife, okay, when I married my wife, okay, I continuously pursued her. Hindi dahil sa, hindi dahil sa nung sinagot niya na ako, tapos na, no. I continuously pursued her. Continuously courting her. And, 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 and I have to be somehow creative on, on building that. Amen. It was God's idea in giving Adam a, a companion. Adam did not ask for a companion. It was God who saw the need for a companion. Amen. Hello, single people. If you're single here, okay, God knows. God knows that. When you go home, you could have say, Honey, I'm home. Ay, wala po pala akong asawa. <laughs> but God knows that. When you open the door of your room, okay, God knows that, hey, there's this feeling. I can't stand this feeling any longer. <laughs> It was God's idea to give Adam, okay, to give Adam a companion. And how did that God made that process? Okay, he made Adam to fall into sleep, right? Remember that story? He made Adam to fall into sleep, and the Bible says, you know, into a deep sleep. Why would God 
caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep. Okay? When in fact, God's intention was to bring out woman out of him. Right? Haven't you thought about that? Why would God have to bring him to a deep sleep? Why? I have this, I have this, uh, 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 um, uh, what do you call this? I, I have a, a hypothesis. The reason why, okay, the re I think, okay, I think, okay, I think, I think one of God's reasons why God brought Adam into a deep sleep, not into a half, half sleep, but a deep, deep sleep, so that God can create the woman perfect for Adam. Why? Ask me why again. Adam doesn't have any idea of what a woman is. The only orientation of Adam, first orientation of a female, was a female cow, or a female horse, a female dog. Hello. He doesn't have any idea. That's why God had to bring him to a deep sleep and say, trust me on this. I'm going to bring her to you. And guess what happened? On that day, when Adam woke up and saw this woman lying beside him, he said, Whoa, man, beautiful. That's why he said, now I call you woman. Because, whoa, man, she's beautiful. Okay? He saw that Adam would be more productive if someone is with him. He saw that. That's why the Bible notes, God notes this. God gave Adam a suitable helper, a helper helper, a helpful partner. He saw that. That's why when, when, when Adam saw Eve, you know, all of a sudden, he sang this song. God gave me you. God gave me you. Show me what's real. And there's more to life. Just how I feel And all that I'm worth Is right before my eyes And all that I live for Though I didn't know why Now I do Cause God gave me purpose. All of a sudden, Adam understood the purpose of this woman beside him. God told him, help her. She will be a helper to you. She will help you decide. She will help you work. She will help you, and she will complete you. That's the very purpose of marriage. Amen? That's the very purpose of marriage, you know? Knowing that, knowing that this person, God gave me you. He didn't, he, God give, didn't give anyone else, but he was so specific, he gave me you. Amen? So that if you're married, if you're married today, appreciate the you beside you. Amen? Appreciate that person. Okay? If you're unmarried today, wait for the you, for you. Amen? There is a you for you there. It's not going to be anyone, anybody else just around you randomly picking. No. God will bring that person to you even in your deep sleep. Even when you're not looking for it, God will bring you your you. Diba? Hello. Do you agree? Paro, you're not agreeing with me. <laughs> okay. Don't sleep on me, okay? Don't sleep on me. Okay? Secondly, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 7. Love believes all things, hopes all things, believes and hopes. Marriage is binding the two shall become one. Why? Because the goal of marriage is oneness. The goal of marriage is oneness. So therefore, if we're talking about oneness, we're talking, we're talking about partnership. Okay? Marriage is a relationship in which one person always right. Okay? Marriage is a relationship in which one person is always right and the other is the husband. (laughs) 
Did you get that? Marriage is a relationship in which one person is right and the other person is the husband. It's partnership. Therefore, we have to understand this thing. When we talk about partnership, one key ingredient for partnership is what we call trust. Right? Trust. ang tiwala ko ang bawat kinala ay tumatama. Hello? Sabi ko na nga, sabi ko na nga. Okay? But we have, have, we have to understand this thing. Okay? That, that marriage is partnership. Okay? It won't work without the other. Okay? Friedrich Nietzsche, Nietzsche okay? I'm having difficulties saying, but I, love, I like what he said. He said, it is not a lack of love, but a lack of friendship that makes unhappy marriages. This is what most people uh, tend to forget. When they already, where they're already married, and all, you know, for the for the first few years they're excited, they're they're in love with each with each other, and later on, you know, it pursues later on, you know, for more years, you know, the friendship is gone. I'm telling you, don't lose the friendship. Okay, yes, I understand your lovers, and you know, but the, the thing is, you know, yes, I understand you you have grown into from lovers to parents, and there are a lot of responsibilities. But please, don't forget to. To let, don't forget friendship. Amen. You, start, you started out as friends. Keep working on that friendship. Hello. Nourish and nurture that friendship. Amen. Maski na pikon na pikon ka na, even though you say, ah, I just, I just slept with my friend. I woke up my best friend, you know, is, is right, you know, is right beside me. And I hate him. Or I hate her. Back it. He didn't even brush his teeth. He didn't even put out a, a deodorant, you know, whenever he lifts up his hands like that, I can smell it, you know. But the thing is, and I'm think, the thing is, you know, if the friendship is still there, I'm telling you, you can keep the love. Amen? The love boat promises to love everyone. You know this old song? This is an old 70s, 80s song. And during that time, you know, during that time, everyone who gets married, they will always hear this song and, uh, and it rekindles their love for one another. Hello. You start up with friends, you keep your friendship. Amen. Why? Because marriage is the highest scale or state of friendship. It is the highest. Marriage is the highest form of relationship. It is the highest form of relationship, amen. It is not going, and I'm telling you, this is not going to be easy. But I'm telling you, it's going to be worth it. Fighting for your marriage, working on your marriage, keeping that friendship, I'm telling you. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it, amen. When you got married, you left all of your closest relationships and promised to be with your spouse, your exclusive relationship. That's why the Bible knows, even in the book of Genesis, the Bible knows that marriage is exclusive between man and woman. It is so exclusive that you cannot feel under and move around and, and look for other things. No. Sabi nga nila, ang tunay nagmamahal ay parang, parang isang masipag na sudyante. Maski na nahihirapan na siya sa exam, hindi pa rin siya lumilingon sa iba. Yun na lang tunay nagmamahal. Mas na nahihirapan ka sa test ng inyong pag-ibig, hindi ka pa rin lilingon sa iba. Bakit? Hindi, dahil hindi dalawa ang puso mo, isa lang. Nag-iisa ang puso ko na kayang, kaya lang mag-accommodate ng isang puso rin. At yun ay ikaw. Ikaw ang bigay ng may kapal. Ikaw ang sanghi ng aking paghihirap. <laughs> Mali yata yun. No, that's wrong. Okay. I don't know the lyrics. Well, anyway. Okay. Marriage is the highest state of friendship. It's not going to be easy, but I'm telling you, but it's going to, work, to be worth it when you fight for it. Amen. It is so exclusive. It is exclusive for a man and a woman. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Lastly, and I'm ending. 1 Corinthians 13, 7 and 8. It reads, 
endures all things. Love endures all things. Everybody say, endures all things. Okay, you don't want enduring, right? Mean I'm going to endure this person for the rest of my life? Yes. Okay, love endures all things. In verse 8, love never ends. Marriage doesn't promise a storm-free life, but it does promise when storms come, waters rise, winds blow hard, someone stands committed to face this with you. Someone will endure it with you. Someone will fight. You don't have to fight this love alone. You, both of you are fighting for it. Purpose, partnership, and lastly, permanence. Robert Stenberg said, Passion is the quickest to develop and the quickest to fade. Intimacy develops more slowly and commitment more gradually still. Meaning you work on commitment. You work on commitment. Para sa aking mga ano, kakosa dito, mga lalaki, ang tunay na lalaki, pinapaiyak ang babae sa salitang, will you marry me? Hindi sa salitang, will you set me free? <laughs> Hello? Ano ba, yung, ano ba yung kantang yun? Yung, you know, set me free? Huh? It's, an old, you know, it's an old song. Anyway, I don't remember it. It's too, it's too old. Okay. Matthew 19, verse 4. He answered, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? And said, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother. Hello? Hello? A man will leave his father and mother and hold fast. Everybody say, Hold fast. Meaning, hold fast. Say, Hold fast. Okay? Meaning you're going to hold, grip, have a grip, okay? And the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. What God has joined together, let no man separate. Of course, there will be some reasons, and some are valid. That's why, why, why marriages, you know, are, are, are not kept together, Okay? And we don't condemn them. You know, they, they, they have all their own reasons. But the real intention of God for marriages is permanence. Why? Because falling in love is easy. Staying, staying in love requires work. But I'm telling you, there will be attempts to discredit your marriage. But, it, but, but if your marriage is founded on the one who initiated it, what can man do to destroy it? Or what can circumstances do? To discredit it. There are some things that we, we go through in life. Now, please don't get me wrong. There are, there are some things really that go through in life. And there are some couples, yes, who, who cannot really find themselves, you know, living together for, for, for the long haul. And there are reasons and valid reasons why. But the real intention, okay, but the real intention of God for marriages is, is permanence. The sacredness of marriage is based on a covenant. It is a sacred, whole, sacred holy, and, and exclusive commitment. You see, church, marriage is like fitness. You can cheat on it and expect to work. Marriage is like fitness. You know, you, for example, you, know, you want to grow your biceps, but you're not going to the gym. You know, you want to, you want to have a six-pack abs, and you're not do, doing any sit-ups. Okay? Sometimes the six-pack abs is, is so, so difficult. It's so difficult to manage. That's why, you know, that's why some people decided to have a one-pack ab, just like me. <laughs> Isang pack na lang, madali na lang yun. Kasi six-pack, ang hirap, uh, so difficult to, to maintain. And at the same time, if I maintain a, a six-pack abs, you know, I'll, you know, I mean, man, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to shy away from, from temptations, you know. I don't want to be a model of fit, uh, you know, all these uh, fit things and fit right, you know, something, mga drinks. You know, so because I'm living a low-profile life, you know. But it's, it's, it, later on, you know, I, one time, you know, I had a dream. 
You know, I had a dream. Na sabi ko, parang one time ba, I woke up and I have six pack abs. You know? Sabi ko, God, you know, this is a miracle. This is such a miracle. You know, and then later on, I, and later on you know, when, when nung maliligo na ako, you know, um, all of a sudden, my six pack abs uh, uh, were gone. I realized it was just a shirt. See, marriage is fitness. It's like fitness. You can cheat on it and expect to work. We have to work on it. Okay? When marriages are, are, in, are, in, are in, a, in a challenge, you know, it doesn't mean it's already failed. No. Marriages who face challenges are, being, are only being strengthened. Na-strengthen lang yan. And sometimes, you know, because, because of our expectation of, of marriage, you know, para feeling natin, you know, oh, nadi-discredit na yung marriage, oh, let's, let's end this up na. Tapusin na lang natin. Okay? But you have, we have to work on it. To the single people who are here, who are here today, you know, to the single people who are, who are here today, you know, there's a, there's a, 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 a false misconception, a, a misconception of, of all about marriage. You know, a lot of people say, you know, in order for me to contain my, my sexual urge, you know, then I'd rather get married. No, that's a wrong concept. You know, as a single person, you have to first control your sexual urge before you get married because marriage is not an answer for that. You control it. You make a decision. Why? Because you, when you're married and you don't still control your sexual urges, I'm telling you, there'll be, there'll be a lot of problems along the way. But you have to, at, as a single person now, control it, you know, and ask God grace, you know, to control it, amen. Are you here with me? You see, church, you know, listen to this. Marami babae at hindi perfecto, okay? Pero hindi sila dapat niloloko. You don't fool, you don't fool around, you know, with ladies. You respect them. You love them. Hindi sila pinagbubuhatan ng kamay. Inaalokan sila ng, ng, ng kamay ng pagmamahal. The Bible says, you know, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. When we talk about bears all things because it is built on selfless love. Bear, believes all things because it is built on trust. Hopes all things because it is built on a promise. Endures all things because it is built on commitment. And lastly, he says, love never ends. Love never ends. Real love stories never have endings. They don't have any endings. When we see, you know, when we see, when we see couples, they get married, you know. They invest so much on weddings. And later on, you know, makita na lang, something, something went wrong, you know, they easily give up. But I'm telling you, real love stories never have endings. They don't have. But you know what? With the people out here, you know, the photos that you see, these people are so in love. I like the story of June Rose, Chris, Karen, Third and Kate, Jose and Mavic, Carlo and Ruby, Dong and Prezi, Fidel and Eder, and a lot more. I like the stories. I like their love stories. But you know what? Every love story is beautiful, but ours is my favorite. Ours is my favorite. It's different. And every time you look back, you would just realize, you know, how God brought us together, you know, in sickness and in health, richer or poorer, better or worse, till death do us part. That's why love never ends. If you're here today, you're married, I encourage you to work that marriage. Work on it. Keep it. It's not going to be a good highway. There are bumpy roads along the way. Yes, there will be. And there will be a lots of it. It will be. It will be difficult. Yes, it is difficult. It, is, it will be a testing. It will be testing. In fact, you know, every, time, every, morning, every morning you will be 
waking up with the person who, who tests you the most. But it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that your marriages will be failing or are failing. No. They're just only being strengthened. They're only being strengthened. If you're here today, you're, you're looking forward to be married. You're, you're a single person. And one day, you know, you know, by God's grace, you'll meet this person or probably you already have this person with you and you're already planning for marriage. I'm telling you, you wait for it. Amen. You wait for it. You wait for the right time. And if you're here today, your marriages are being tested. There are challenges along the way. There are challenges along the way. And it's difficult. It's difficult. I'm pleading. Please don't give up on your marriage. Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep working on it. Keep praying on it. Keep trusting God for it. It is never an accident why you were brought together. Never was. And it will never will be. I would like to end with this. I started out with this ancient Jewish marriage custom, and they have a contract, they have consummation, and they have celebration. It started out with a contract for us, God's covenant of love. He sent His Son for our redemption. That was His contract. The consummation was when we when when the Lord found us and we placed and put our faith in Christ for our salvation and we being one in Christ. And the last when we celebrate we await his coming. Jesus comes back for his bride. Contract consummation celebration. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 19, verse 7, Let us be glad and rejoice, and let us give honor to Him, for the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb, and His bride has prepared herself. And that is celebration. Church, listen to this. The concept, okay? The concept of marriage is basically founded on contract, consummation, and celebration. It is basically how God would lay out the condition of the church. That's why whenever Israel in the Old Testament would, would backslide and forget about God, God would always use this word against Israel and said, you have adulterated yourself. You have left your first love. And therefore, marriages is a shadow of God's plan. It is both for us. We are privileged. We are privileged to see God in the middle of our marriages. Shall we all stand on our feet, please? I would like to pray for three groups of people. First, I would like to pray for the singles. If you're here today, you're a single person. It is my prayer that you wait and keep and make yourselves, keep yourselves pure before marriage. I'd like to pray for you. Father, I pray, God, for the single people who are here today. Oh, Lord, I ask that you give them, Lord, the patience to wait, not to be hasty. You keep them away from any forms of impurity. I pray, God, that you would that you would speak to them, assure them 
God, that indeed you have prepared someone, reserved someone for them, and it will come in your time. I pray, Father God, for the second group, people who are, who are married and who are facing a challenge. I pray, God, that you would assure them, Lord, that you, are, you have not left them nor forgotten them. But Lord, I pray that all the more, God, that you would assure them, Lord, that you are the author, you're the finisher, and you are the ones going to heal these relationships. We pray, oh God, we pray that you would manifest, Lord, yourself in the midst of misunderstandings and or miscommunications or or hatred or or which cause bitterness, Lord, about, along the relationship. I pray, God, that you be the one, Lord. Be the one, Father, God, to bring healing Lord, into these marriages. And I pray, God, for those who are married today, I pray, God, that you would allow our marriages to be strong, that we would stay committed to love each other. Use our marriages, God, to be an example not only for our children, but also to the young people around us who looks up to us and emulates our relationship with one another. And I pray, God, lastly, I pray, Father, for each one of us, Lord, in this room. You said in your word, God, that we, the church, is your bride. And you're coming back. You're coming back. Father, I ask God that each one of us, Lord, in this room will find ourselves in the arms of our Lord. We will find ourselves, Lord, enjoying your love, being secured and protected. Lord, we thank you for this day. We honor you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. And all the saints of God say, Amen and Amen. Thank you for listening to this message. For more messages like these from other Victory Centers, please visit victory.org.ph slash resources slash podcast.